do not ignore the red flashing light on your charger. Hey guys, this is Megan from You Go To Bikini. Today I want to talk about our electric fences and our chargers and what it takes to get started. Um, it's actually pretty simple, but I know it's something that can be pretty intimidating. So let me show you what we have and what we've been using for the last several years and uh, talk to you about some tips and tricks and some mistakes to avoid. It's pretty windy out here today, so hopefully the sound isn't too bad, but um, I want to show you. So we've got the goats here. If you've been following us for any bit of time, you see these nets. Uh, all over. We use them for all of our animals, including the dog, and they've been awesome. So these are Premier One sheep and goat nets. Uh, they come in a couple different heights. We have some that are 42 inches tall and some that are 35 inches tall. Um, we bought the higher ones because we were worried the sheep would jump over them, uh, but actually the lower ones we haven't had any issues with and they're lighter to carry. So uh, I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you these fences um, and talk about why we like them so much and why we chose them um, and some tips uh, if you are getting started out. All right, so these nets come in 100 foot lengths. Again, they come in different heights and then they have the poles uh, in, every so often. So we bought the, I think they're like a plus net. They have poles, shorter distance. So we have twice as many poles. That does make the whole net heavier to carry but it makes it easier to step in. You have a shorter length of fence that get, makes it less saggy. Over time, um, we could probably pull this section here a little tighter, but over time, the nets just don't stay super rigid if you have a longer section in between them. So if you are just starting out and you're trying to choose a fence, keep in mind how heavy it is to gather it all up and be holding it basically in one arm and using the other arm to step in each post as you go. So our favorites are the 35 inch height ones. I believe these, these are the taller ones. The 35 inch tall ones are awesome. They're the easiest and the lightest to carry and to move around. And so that's our preference now. And so any future ones that we would buy would be that height. Now you can see the spacing on these is pretty big. So the baby goats, when they're young, they can fit through those bottom ones. They do have smaller spacing on the bottom, few rungs, but it's still small enough that the baby goats can get through. And so we wait until they're about two weeks old and we really make sure that they have hit the fence before we leave them in it unsupervised. Uh, so we're certain that they uh, know to stay away from it and they're not gonna get stuck in it. So when you are starting out and you are trying to choose a fence, you need to uh, pay attention to how heavy it's gonna be and who all is moving it, uh, how often you need to move it and how big your animals are. So um, these nets don't work great for uh, little babies, but by about two weeks old, our mini La Manchas are big enough that they can stay in there. Um, these are not at all sufficient for chickens. Chickens walk right through them in and out with no they make no difference at all, but these were great for our goats, for our sheep, for our dog, um, and they would keep out predators. They just are not going to keep in a chicken or anything like that. So uh, it's important to know what you're using for your animals. If you are trying to do chickens, you definitely have to get the chicken netting, but know that the chicken nets get heavier. There's more wire. There's physically more uh, wires in between each pole, and so they're a lot heavier to move. So if you have sheep or goats, it can be a real pain to try to use chicken netting to move around all the time. Hi, Tansy. So another consideration when you're starting out is that the cost of these electric nets and the chargers can add up quick. And so my best advice is to get away with the fewest number of things as possible uh, to, to help save on costs and to give you a chance to work with them and see what you think and what works best for you uh, before you invest in more. So we started with um, two nets for the sheep and one for the goats. And that was because um, we had we had four sheep at the time, three ewes, uh, the, the ram was separate. So we had three sheep at the time and they were really flighty and they were not at all people friendly. And so it was super important that we never let them out while we were 
um, moving them. And so we had two nets, one that they were in and one that they moved to. And we had to very carefully set up the next one and like get, keep them herded in the first one and kind of fold it up while we were moving. It made moves a little bit longer and a little bit harder because we constantly had to be worried about not letting the sheep out. But after our first season, the sheep are much better. They don't run away from us and they actually come when you call them a bunch. So now we really only need one net for the sheep. Um, and then for the goats, the goats have always been much friendlier and they, they wander off, but we can let them out, move the fence and then kind of just go grab them and bring them back to where we want them. So one fence will totally work for you in most situations. <laughs> the baby goats are funny. And so it's important to keep your costs down. And then as each year, as we've sold off baby goats, we usually buy another net or two just to make our lives a little bit easier. So right now the goats, uh, we've got three mamas, two have given birth and one hasn't. And we've got the seven baby goats and they're in, this is a two net area. So two 100 foot nets makes this pretty decent square. And so we don't have to move them every day. We can move every two to three days. If they're in a smaller net, you just pay attention to the grass when they've eaten everything you've got to move them so in a smaller net we were moving more than once or well we were moving once a day all right so i'm up here with the sheep they are also in two nets i'll try to get the lighting a little better hello they're shedding out so you can see their very fluffy coats are looking a little scraggly luna can i pull some off of you but it literally just comes off so she'll start to look a little better. Hello, boys. The boys are always friendlier than the girls. Uh, but so for them, we use two nets. And again, our first season, we just had one uh, because of cost. So it was harder, we had to move them more often, but it was cheaper. If you can afford the second net, by all means, makes it easier. So we've got two mamas in here and four lambs. And the two gives us about two days and as the summer progresses, we might get a few extra days out of it. It depends on how much grass is in the area. We just keep an eye on it. And when the grass is gone, we move them to a new spot. It's not very complicated. I know we always wondered, well, how do we know to move them? You literally just look, just watch the ground, see how much they eat. Um, we're noticing here in this section, some of this grass has gone to seed. Um, the lighting, oh, I just touched the fence. Hoo -wee. That'll get you. I touched it in another video too. So some of this grass has gone to seed and the sheep actually aren't eating it. So that's gonna tell us we need to be faster about mowing uh, if the sheep can't get to it. And we're gonna have to move the sheep off of it if they're not actually eating that spot. But we'll just pay attention and monitor what they're doing. All right, so another logistic issue and why we have so many nets is we have Mr. Sean, our ram. Uh, last season, we actually kept him with our bucks. They're hiding there in their shelter. And unfortunately he hurt our old buck Link um, and it ultimately ended up in Link passing away, um, which was a huge bummer. It was a long series of events, but Sean got too big and hurt them. So Sean has to be by himself and the bucks are by themselves. So they're each in one net and we just kind of loop them off of each other to make it a little easier to set up. And then these two are run off one charger. So I'll show you our chargers. I've talked about them a little bit before, but um, this is kind of a main reason why we have mostly smaller chargers uh, or why it's worked out okay, because we constantly have these small groups. So we've got, you know, one here or two, two groups here. Uh, the dog is separate. She's got her own. The sheep are separate. The goats are separate. So having extra chargers, means that we don't have to worry quite so much about logistics. It can be really hard to get everybody right smack dab next to each other to share. So this has worked really well for us. So this is our Premier One charger. It's our biggest one. It will run the most number of nets. And that is super convenient as we wanna get the sheep on a larger section. Sometimes it is really handy to have either the sheep or the goats, or uh, even when we run our back pastures, if we have the sheep and the goats right next to each other, having a charger that can run, um, I think upward of six nets is really handy. So this is, we, this is the last charger we bought. Uh, we actually made a super expensive mistake last year, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But this is a big one, and this is what we just upgraded to uh, at the end of last year. But we started our season, did the whole first year with just little guys. We have a Ken Cove one, 
and some Patriot ones, and they run two nets at a time. And it can be frustrating if you're trying to get bunches of groups together, but at the same time, they're much cheaper. And it allowed us to have these separate groups. The sheep are here and the boys are back over there. And so having one little charger on the boys and one little charger on the sheep, then that allows us to have one little charger uh, up on the dog. So if we had just one big one, it could probably run all those nets, but then they would have to be right next to each other, touching each other all the time. And that can actually get harder to do than you might imagine. The logistics of just trying to move everybody all the time, if they're always having to be touching each other to get that one charger to work, uh, can be can be quite frustrating. So uh, little chargers have actually been super helpful. And if you are starting out, uh, don't be concerned about having to buy a smaller charger to start. Just make sure it can power, you know, whatever size you need for your one animal group. So if you've got, you know, sheep that you need to put in two nets, then a charger that will run two nets is kind of really all you need. So one upgrade we've been thinking about, which would be really cool, um, is if we could actually get a hot wire all the way around the exterior perimeter of our white fence here, then we'd be able to tie in the nets wherever. Uh, that would allow us to get a uh, non-solar charger. They're usually a little bit cheaper for stronger power. And if we could rig that up in the house, um, you know, we could rig it up somewhere over on that side of the house, run it out to the white fence and start a perimeter wire all around here that would be really cool um, that would really help us but it's kind of one step at a time that might actually be a simple project to do but like all homesteads there's a million things to do what we do have is some perimeter wire over here um, it was here when we moved in there is hot wire running all the way down behind this fence on these t-posts and it had never been hot we never did anything with it until cows moved in next door and they started pushing through our vinyl fence here because we had grass and they did not uh, they overgrazed it a little bit and so we actually kind of cleaned up this fence line and stuck a charger it's on a t-post right down here at the end of the driveway um, right past that chain link so all we did was stick a charger up there and we just have one of our small chargers running it and since it's just a straight wire that small charger could run miles of that fencing it would be great so we'd love to get some more all the way down but for right now this is protecting this vinyl fence uh, that the cows have pushed over a few times they've uh, popped a couple of the center panels out of it this is the patriot charger we have the most of these i believe we actually have three now um, it's the sg 150 it is a half a joule and a half a joule will run two nets. The 0.25 joule will only run one net. Uh, they're a little bit cheaper. So these are kind of middle. Um, there are much stronger ones like the Premier One charger. Um, but these little guys have been a perfect mix for us. So if you are starting, I would highly recommend something in the half joule because uh, it'll run two. Uh, on occasion, we have hooked up three and it'll run it, um, but it's a little bit weaker but it will do it. The other great thing about these little tiny chargers is they seem to recharge themselves really fast. So if we get cloudy days, it can go, man, we haven't had issues. Even in over roughly a week of cloudy weather, it will still recharge itself and keep it going. Most of them have uh, some indicator lights. It's flashing green right now. There we go. So it flashes every time it hits. The fence only hits um, it's not a continuous, it's that alternating, you know, it only hits when it flashes. Um, and if something were, if the battery was, was really low, it would actually flash red in there as well. And that leads us to one of the mistakes we made. So it is really important to pay attention to the battery indicators on your chargers. All right, so one major tip to be aware of if you are just starting out with solar chargers and fencing, is to make sure that you pay attention to those battery indicator lights. We um, haven't had any issues with the Patriot or the Ken Cove one. I have a feeling it's because it's just one battery inside. Uh, they're smaller and so they recharge faster uh, after periods of cloudiness. We have had the Ken Cove one uh, flash red at us and so we've uh, brought it in. It has an AC adapter to plug into the house. And so we have had to do that. We've had to swap out um, if we didn't have one in use or um, on occasion leave somebody without one 
uh, like during the day. You, we don't really have any predator issues during the day and the sheep are the least likely to test my fence. So I have left a charger off the sheep and made sure it was on the goats. But overall, I am super happy with how fast they recharge, uh, how fast they come back even after cloudiness or being in the trees in the woods. Um, but we made a huge mistake with our Premier Charger. So last year we got it. Uh, we used it with our goats and sheep out back. And it, we got it, it was sunny, it was working well. Uh, we had some cloudy weather and so it started flashing red green, but then it was sunny. So we kind of left it, it's, it went back up. And then we started taking the goats all through the backwoods. And so over the course of probably more than a week, um, the charger was in the woods and shaded by the trees much more than I realized. I knew it was getting shade, um, but it was still getting some sun. And it went down to red. And for some reason, I don't know, for some reason I assumed that it would, it would get recharged by the sun well enough. And I kept thinking to myself, man, it's been, it's been pretty sunny. Like, why is it flashing red? It should be fine. Um, it'll be fine. And so we left it and we didn't pull it back in and charge it. And so it probably, to its credit, on flashing red, it ran, I don't know, it was probably a week. <laughs> and it still, it still charged the fence. So the sheep were not without uh, protection. For some reason, in hindsight, it seems so obvious. But at the time, uh, we were used to the little chargers that they had flashed red for maybe a day and then the sun would recharge it the next day. And I just didn't realize how shaded it was in the woods. And so unfortunately, we totally and utterly killed those batteries. We got them super low. They wouldn't hold a charge at all. I couldn't, uh, we finally brought it in because it wasn't working well. We tried to plug it into the wall and it just wouldn't, it acted like the batteries weren't doing anything. My husband put it on a tr trickle charger or I don't know what it's called, some charger. He was finally able to get them to register and we've been running them in the charger since then. But we've noticed every few days it would flash red green again, even it's spring, it's sunny. It's been full sun all day and we're still seeing the charger drop down um, and not hold a charge really every night. It would drop down and be flashing at night. Um, and then during the day it would kind of charge back up, but it just couldn't hold its charge. So we talked to a local battery store. We had to replace the two batteries, which were pretty expensive. Um, the charger itself, I believe was about $400 and the replacement batteries were, um, were they a hundred dollars each? They were a hundred dollars each, weren't they? They were $100 each to replace. There are two batteries in that Premier One charger. Um, so that was an expensive lesson, but we chose to get it. We upgraded those batteries or replaced them. And now it is working great. So do not ignore the red flashing light on your charger. Um, it absolutely means that it needs to be pulled off out of duty and charged. We were just kind of in a pickle because we needed it. We had the animals behind it and we didn't have a spare. Um, another suggestion is to actually have spare batteries that you can just swap out, um, but we didn't have the time and we didn't realize how low we were making it go. But yes, avoid our mistakes. Make sure you're paying attention to your batteries and your charger and make sure you get them charged. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about electric fencing or the chargers, I would be more than happy to answer. Um, we're still pretty new, but we do have a couple years experience under our belt and a couple big mistakes under our belt. And um, they have been working really, really well for us. Uh, it can be labor intensive to move them, but we have seen a tremendous difference in the health of our pasture by moving our animals around and in the health of our animals by keeping them off of the parasites. And so it is 100% worth it. Um, these Premier One fences have worked really well for us. They've held up. Um, their posts are really strong. Uh, they don't get bent or fall over. So we're really happy with the products we've used. Um, and other than the mistake we made with the Premier One charger, uh, the chargers have been working really well for us too. So we plan on continuing using electric fences. Uh, it helps regenerate our soil. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, let us know and we hope to encourage you on your journey.